when you're fasting, whether it's for 14 hours, 16 hours, 20 hours, 36 hours, there's all kinds of different cellular processes that are upregulating. And these are things that can certainly help with detoxification pathways in the body, one of which is known as NR. F2 pathway, which Dr. Rhonda Patrick talks about quite a bit. Bottom line is, we know that there's evidence there, and this can happen even with caloric restriction. You're upregulating these antioxidant pathways. Antioxidants obviously neutralize or get rid of pro-oxidative stress. But how does this actually align with detoxification itself? Well, we'll explain that, but what I want to talk about is how we can utilize Moringa after a fast. It's imperative you don't take it during a fast. We'll kind of talk about how this works and how you can utilize it, the mechanisms, the best sort of course of action, when to take it, when not to take it. If you don't mind, drop a quick comment down below for the algorithm. It really does help these videos get out there in front of people. And again, I like to share what I'm talking about up front. So if you got the hint that it's Moringa, that's great. But I still ask that you stick around to learn because that's really what we're all here to do. I also popped a link down below for Armra Colostrum, which is what I would say one of the most important supplements when you are fasting. And the reason is, is because after a fast, your gut barrier integrity is a little bit compromised. And that's what colostrum is really most noted for is gut health and gut barrier integrity. So I've been using colostrum for a long time and specifically Armra because they're the only brand that still has the bioactive compounds, over 400 of them intact, because they use a particular cold processing that doesn't damage the living bioactive compounds that are in colostrum. So really unique product, and that's why it's been making so many waves. It really is the only colostrum product out there that is worth taking, at least in my opinion. So that link down below gets you a special discount off Armra. They've got their travel stick packs, they've got their tubs. I prefer the orange flavor because it's, I don't know, it just tastes good. It kind of tastes like an orange creamsicle, and the stick packs really convenient when I'm traveling and when I know my gut health might be a little bit more compromised, or I'll take it a little bit more often when I'm fasting or a little more stressed. So that link down below in the top line of the description. So Moringa, speaking of bioactive compounds, Moringa has over 90 bioactive compounds. The main reason we're focused on using it here is because of how it turns on what's called the phase two detoxification systems within the body. Now, when you're fasting, you feel fresh, you feel clean. Your body's going through all kinds of different, I guess you could call it detoxification, but a lot of autophagy, just like you feel good when you're exercising. I'm not saying that fasting is doing anything magical above exercise, quite frankly. I'm just talking about it's attainable for people. But I want you to think of your body as sort of having this padlock. And your padlock is always locked, except when you activate NRF2. And NRF2 can be activated through fasting, through sauna, through even some cold plunge, through good diet, through low carb, many ways to activate it. But then there's certain compounds like sulfurophane that we'll find in cruciferous vegetables or moringa that activate it. One of the things they do is they sort of unlock this padlock. And when this padlock is unlocked, you have a steady stream of NRF2 that floods in. And NRF2, which I'll explain in detail in a little bit, essentially is turning on these anti-inflammatory and reactive oxygen and species neutralizing systems. But what's happening a lot of times is when the NRF2 floods in, it gets disabled by something called KEAP1. And this is like a self-regulating system because we do need a certain level of oxidative stress too it's a fine balance within the body. Now, what Moringa does is it unlocks the padlock, so lots of NRF2 floods in, but then it also stops the KEEP1 from stopping the NRF2. So you're stopping KEEP1 that would normally stop NRF2. Now, why is NRF2 so important during fasting? What we're trying to get here is we're trying to get more out of our fast. So when NRF2 travels into a cell, it travels through the cell, essentially into the nucleus, and and it binds to DNA sequences. When it binds to these DNA sequences, it triggers a whole host of protective mechanisms upon the cell. What it does is it signals to the cascade of phase two detoxification systems and enzymes, one of which is superoxide dismutase. Superoxide dismutase binds to these major oxidative stressors within the body, such as superoxide. And when it binds to that, it turns it into simple hydrogen peroxide, which the body can deal with. Now, the other thing that it upregulates tremendously is what's called GST, glutathione transferase. This is another antioxidant that when we're fasting or when we're detoxing in any way, binds to these rogue electrons and it donates part of itself to that electron in order to neutralize it. And then it goes through this recycling system again, sort of recharges or becomes strong again to neutralize. Without NRF2 activated, we cannot have that system occurring. So I want you to think about fasting and periods of time when you're fasting and you get really 
weak. It actually feels like it's wearing you down more than it's helping you. Those are the times when you might need the extra help. Fasting is supposed to make you feel good. If it starts making you feel cruddy, it means you're going too far. Now, here's the important thing to know, because I hope you're sticking with me on this. Fasting is a stressor to the body, period. It acts as a hormetic stressor. When you're fasting, these hormetic stressors trigger the body to increase its antioxidants to deal with the stressors. So when you are fasting, you would not want to take Moringa, not during a fast. If you've seen some of Jed Fahey's discussions, especially with like Rhonda Patrick on Moringa, he talks about this. Like he kind of thinks of Moringa as almost this hormesis, like simulating or creating this environment where the body will want to have more antioxidant capability. Because remember, what's unique about Moringa is it's increasing our body's own antioxidant pathways. It's not an antioxidant in and of itself. So would you want to take it during a fast to increase it more? it might be a little too much stress. So actually what you'd want to do is you'd want to take it at the end of a fast, after you break your fast, and it would potentially extend those antioxidant effects of your fast a little bit longer without the added stress of the fast, if that makes sense. So once you've eaten food, your fast is effectively broken, things are starting to recover, this would be a nice time to have sort of an anti-inflammatory and antioxidant effect carry over, but without the stress of being in the actual fast itself. So what I would recommend is have your breakfast meal, whatever that might look like, and then maybe an hour or so later, have some Moringa. And how much Moringa? A lot of the studies show decently high doses, a few hundred milligrams a few times per day, and that's totally fine. But the important thing to note is you don't want to be taking this all the time. I know people that do take it every day, and if they do that, they're taking a lower dose, like sub 100 milligrams. They're taking a lower dose, just a sort of maintenance. Because what we're seeing is that the evidence with Moringa seems to be extra strong in people that are dealing with metabolic dysfunction. So if you're fasting to try to improve insulin resistance, or you're fasting to try to kind of help your metabolic dysfunction and become metabolically healthier, or help out with the mitochondria, which Moringa might have some components there with mitochondrial biogenesis, this is the kind of thing you want to pay attention to. So it's like fast, do your normal thing, keep it as close to water as you can, break your fast with some lean protein. Later on, add the Moringa to kind of extend the benefits of the fast, extend that NRF2 effect. If you really wanted to double it up, you could also add some cruciferous vegetables too, because sulforaphane works on a different pathway within RF2. So you get like a double whammy there. So as always, keep it locked to hear my channel. See you tomorrow.